Welcome to Comics Bazaar, the channel of comics commentary and arcana. This video features The Amazing X-Men number 3, cover dated May 1995. This is a very effective cover, nice design work by Andy Kubert, inked by Matthew Ryan, featuring the victorious apocalypse looming menacingly over the defeated Magneto. In particular, I really like the uplighting on Apocalypse's uh, body and armor here. I think it's very effective. Let's open this one up to the splash page. This is an interesting concept for a splash page. We have uh, Magneto's cloak here in the rain and wind, and he is uh, talking to his dead friend, Charles Francis Xavier. This is Professor X's grave marker. And on it, there is an epitaph. And the epitaph is any dream worth having is a dream worth fighting for. And those were words spoken by Professor X to Magneto 20 years earlier in Israel before he was killed by his own son from the future, Legion. So the creative team here for this particular story entitled Parents of the Atom is Fabian Nicieza, writer Andy Kubert Pensler, Matt Ryan Inker, Richard Starkings and Comic Craft on letters, Kevin Summers and Digital Chameleon on color art. Let's continue with the issue. Great anchor image here of Magneto talking to his dead friend and catching readers up on uh, what's been going on in the series so far in the middle of that monologue as well. I really like this panel here too uh, and the uh, shading and hatching on Magneto. And then he takes off his helmet and he's targeted. Who by? Well, it's Bishop, but Bishop has a message for him that the security perimeter of the mansion has been breached someone is has scanned them and someone is apparently about to attack so of course that was bishop's role in um the original timeline he was uh, tasked by professor x to take care of mansion security and he's doing this 20 years later um in the alternative reality of uh, the age of apocalypse so magneto here takes apart bishop's weapon and puts it back together again proving that he is the master of magnetism. And Bishop says to him, indeed, but will that be enough to keep Apocalypse's forces at bay? Magneto replaces his helmet. That's a really nice panel there, I like that. It always has been. Fire over my left shoulder now, please. So Magneto in complete control. I like the way that Kubert uh, here has gone to the edge of the page, bled the panel, um, the art right out to the edge of the page here, um, moving away from that um, six panel layout. Uh, nicely done and uh, so Magneto was aware because of a disturbance in the electromagnetic field um, around them of the arrival of the infinites so he's not too concerned about infinites he can take them apart very easily but there's a new figure who emerges and that's the vanisher and Magneto says to him it has been a long time since we last clashed and the vanisher says with his big Andy Kubert grin there and so it shall remain. I was merely used to bring the infinites here. The next time I see you, Gene Trader will be in hell. Perhaps, perhaps not, um, says Magneto. So now there's going to be a fight there between uh, Magneto, Bishop, and the infinites. Now Magneto takes the infinites apart pretty uh, handily. And I really like the illustration here of the skull beneath the armored helmet. That's nicely done by Kubert. So nice design work there by him so the battle is over uh, too easily thinks bishop or says bishop the infinites i encountered in seattle were far more powerful but magneto says to bishop don't be fooled he is here waiting to strike so magneto knows that apocalypse is present as well and this is something that we have been waiting for um, from x-men alpha the uh, battle a physical battle between Magneto and Apocalypse and that's what we're going to get in the next few pages so Apocalypse attacks first and he seems to have gotten the better of Magneto already and uh, says here I am the fit I am the strong I am Apocalypse so Bishop blasts him with his rifle and Apocalypse is um, impressed what a uh, that was a blow well struck but he uses the insult gene trader an energy absorber and rechanneler then so this is his first encounter with bishop you're the mysterious stranger rescued by the x-men in seattle are you not and that's x-men alpha i wonder what makes you so special as to be granted refuge by this band of fools so he doesn't know 
and um, he seems to get the better of Bishop here uh, standing on top of his rifle and then we see um, the illustration of uh, Apocalypse's power to uh, control his own molecules and it always looks freaky and weird when he does that so he's got this huge oversized arm that he's about to slam down on Bishop's head then he picks him up and Bishop's um, rifle fires at Apocalypse straight in the face for Chow and that's because Magneto has come to and he says with my last breath I will curse you Apocalypse your mad reign will soon come to an end butcher so is it going to be round two between the pair looks like it on these pages but Apocalypse gets the better of Magneto by not physically but by his strategy even as we speak so he says here the child whom my loyal infinite the vanisher is retrieving even as we speak from your secret tunnels beneath these grounds do you have the courage magneto to leave him to fend for himself to survive without you i thought not so he takes the rifle or magneto drops the rifle and that is him taken captive by apocalypse uh, so he uh, knocks him out once more and then the scene switches to the tunnels beneath the X mansion and uh, I like this uh, sequence here so we've got Nanny she's rounding the corner here down in the sores I like the um, the details here from Andy Kubert we've got some graffiti on the wall there apocalypse now and we've got this rat looking out from the barred window here and even a snake uh, winding round the pipes here that's really nice work from Kubert I like that attention to detail and that little bit of whimsy as well so uh, the Vanisher appears all in magenta and he orders Nanny to surrender the brat to him but Nanny's response is formidable placing my charge in jeopardy is not within my operational parameters she says but protecting Charles Lencher most obviously is so she draws all these weapons on the vanisher and you can see little charles there is delighted <laughs> with the effect as well so then the scene switches and time has passed so we see the aftermath of magneto and bishop's uh, destruction of the infinites but apocalypse is gone and magneto is gone the x-men arrive back from maine uh here they are uh with uh, their names handily given including dazzler there in the background it's a nice enough anchor image i think it's pretty decent and they discover that things have happened at the mansion quicksilver there thinking empty my father missing along with nanny and my brother charles and that stranger bishop as well so uh exodus finds magneto's helmet um, in the graveyard and says to quicksilver there are signs of battle everywhere they were attacked by infinite soldiers but more someone much more powerful was involved to have caused this kind of destruction so they're trying to put the pieces together and then Iceman uh, finds the corpse of the Vanisher and says don't say dead men can't tell any tales because the Vanisher here has plenty to say so Banshees remember Banshee was former Interpol um, investigating the body uh, determines that uh, vanisher was killed uh, by close range precision plasma fire so quicksilver puts it together nanny's defensive system which only comes online if charles's life is in imminent danger so now quicksilver takes charge and orders exodus and dazzler into the tunnels to find them both and just this is just a little detail here that i find interesting exodus and dazzler into the tunnels so using a preposition as a verb that's interesting scripting there from Nicieza. Then Quicksilver makes his way to the ship. Um, he's got instructions to Iceman to find Rogue and tell her that Magneto is missing. Um, he instructs Storm and Sean to stay there. Rogue and the others should be arriving soon. And he tells them, for the love of heaven, be careful how you tell her what happened. I mean, about the missing child, of course. What about you? asks Banshee. Well, Quicksilver has a plan of his own, and we see what it is um, when the scene shifts to Manhattan. An angel here, uh, alighting in heaven, which is his nightclub. Um, but things have been going wrong. 
the cabaret singer Scarlett, who uh, is Alex Summers' um, Ill illicit paramour, was arrested yesterday, he thinks. Karma's missing, taken, um, he's sure, by one of Apocalypse's prelates. That is so, and she has been tortured in X Factor, or sorry, Factor X, number one. Uh, they'll get to, they'll use her to get information I've kept hidden, and indeed that is what they're doing. And he thinks to himself, that's a nice anchor image of him here. I played the middleman, the part of the middleman for too long, working both sides of the fence has kept me alive all these years, but is it worth the price? I'm going to have to make a decision sooner or later about, but he's interrupted, he reaches for a gun, and he is popped in the jaw with a punch by Quicksilver. So, uh, Quicksilver um, upbraids Angel for being allied to Apocalypse, but Angel demurs and says, I'm not an employee of Apocalypse. He says he likes to protect his best interests, especially when it involves his physical well-being. That's an explanation of the gun. Quicksilver takes it apart in, a, in the wink of an eye, and he says he'll take Angel apart as quickly as he did the little toy. But Angel gets control of the situation, tells Quicksilver to calm down. This is one case where the information I have doesn't need to be bartered, begged, or beaten out of me. So he tells Quicksilver what he wants to know. The man called Bishop and Magneto were taken down by Apocalypse himself. So that's a shock to Quicksilver. And uh, Angel goes further and says, your father is here, being kept prisoner in the heart of Apocalypse's citadel. The Bishop fellow was taken to the tabernacle of the Madri in Quebec so that those fanatics can use their fine artistry to find out who he really is and why he's allied himself with you. So Quicksilver here is um, in shock and feels that he isn't able to deal with both situations at the same time. He says here quietly, he doesn't have the manpower to storm the citadel. And even if he did, Bishop is needed to enact his father's plans. Now this is a really great sequence by um, Andy Kubert here. I like the angle on Quicksilver here where we see his ribs uh, delineated with the hatching here and the shading, uh, the spotting of blacks, and then his reflection in the, ba in the uh, bathroom mirror. And also again here, I like this three quarter profile from behind um, of Quicksilver's face and the way that the ear is rendered and the jawline there and the cheekbone. That's really nicely done. Even the fine detail, if you can see it on camera, of his eyelash and the little um, uh, hairs of stubble as well on his jaw. Really, really nicely done. And then the reflection, of course, in the mirror. So um, Angel gets it. There's a dilemma for Quicksilver. Is he going to rescue Bishop or his own father? So that's quite the tough choice to have to make. And then we switch to Quebec to see what's happened to Bishop. Here the Madri here. And um, Bishop's uh, brain is invaded by the Shadow King. So this is a great uh, one-page uh, illustration of the Shadow King eating into Bishop's memories of, uh, of the alternative time that he comes from, where Charles Xavier lived to found the X-Men, a completely different time and place. And so he says, and now images of you as a young man standing alongside a, an uh, Xavier decades older than he ever was. Could this be true? Is it actually possible that you come from another reality? I need to know the answer, Bishop. Tell me the truth. But Bishop resists and casts out the Shadow King from his mind. Expunged from the heretic, as the Madri say. Never before has a mind rejected the psionic probes of the Shadow King. So they wonder what kind of man Bishop is. And then they're grabbed by these tendrils and ribbons. And who is it? Abyss. So it's a little bit disappointing to me that Abyss was so comes back so easily after his um, defeat by Quicksilver in the previous issue. But once again, I do like his uh, very particular uh, design. I think it's a very interesting design. Difficult to draw, but Kubert does a really good job on it. So Abyss says he's going to thwart Magneto's scheme um, because 
uh, he's not prepared for the age of apocalypse uh, to be undone and then we go back to the X mansion I like that establishing shot Quicksilver arrives back from Manhattan has a little dialogue here with Banshee um, gives him the information on the location of Magneto and Bishop and um, so Quicksilver determines we have to leave immediately for Quebec to rescue Bishop and Banshee asks the obvious question what about Magneto so grimly Quicksilver replies right now Sean I think that Bishop is more important to my father's plans than Magneto himself is the implication so last page nice anchor image here of the ship they're going to use to fly to Quebec and there is this um, relationship between Storm and Quicksilver in the Age of Apocalypse reality and so Storm comes up to Quicksilver and asks and tells him not to shut her out and um, says I know how much this is hurting you to abandon your brother as well as your father but Quicksilver is stoic and says it's the logical decision Araro logic she asks you nearly sacrificed the evacuation yesterday to save one child that was the previous issue and now you turn your feelings off when it comes to your own family but he responds I can't I won't even allow myself to think about it Araro so he has faith in his comrades that Dazzler and Exodus will do all they can to rescue Charles um, while he's needed here getting on the ship to save um, Bishop for his father's plan and there you go they take off en route to Quebec so this story um, it's definitely uh, a, a middle chapter in the ongoing story kind of surprising when I think about it that the showdown between Apocalypse and Magneto was a little bit of a damp squib obviously Apocalypse incredibly powerful in this particular reality there is an explanation as regards why Magneto is not as powerful as he otherwise might suppo be supposed to be and it comes out here I skipped over this but I should have read this part here where Apocalypse says to him years ago when you forced my magnificent celestial ship to crash from the skies you came close to defeating me but I survived as did you barely you should have died then rather than to have lived on as a shell of the man you once were losing half of your incredible mutant gift also robbed you of the fire you once had Magneto so Magneto is not fully the mutant he once was because of that past almost complete defeat of Apocalypse and so that explains then why he was why that fight was over so quickly in this particular issue so there you go I do hope that you enjoyed this review and commentary on the amazing x-men number three if you liked the video please uh, do so like it hit the like button in YouTube and if you haven't done so already subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for more content like this